Oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of HR Party of One. I'm your host, Ryan McCoslin. And um, today, I have a guest. Um, Clayton Klutz is the co-owner of Renaissance Therapy Group. Also, runs all the finance and back office and, and, and payroll and all that HR Party of One stuff. So welcome, Clayton. We're, we're really glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Now, I'm excited to talk more about what your experience has been um, doing this back office stuff that keeps Renaissance Therapy Group going and growing. What does Renaissance Therapy Group do? Give me your elevator pitch. We are a healthcare staffing agency and we really specialize in providing uh, medical staffing for uh, state departments and agencies here in Tennessee all across the state. So, so what is the onboarding process? How does that look for you? Well, uh, we use Bernie Portal for onboarding. I've also learned that uh, it's important to issue really clear instructions. And that's something that I've learned along the way. Um, for example, for your I-9, yeah. if you, know, you have your list A documents that you only have to submit one, and then you have your list B that you have to submit two. There's a lot of confusion around that. So in the introductory email, I have that tailored now so that that's communicated to the employee. You know, we have a whole other episode we recently released on, on what it means to recruit and, and onboard people now that um, most of uh, most people across the country are doing that remotely. When you onboard someone now, um, are you actually going on site with them to train them or, or who's doing the training? With our DC centralized workforce, we, we have done remote interviewing for a while now, but then when we, uh, if we screen someone successfully and the state uh, department wanted to meet with them, that was usually done in person. The, uh, the uh, interview process is uh, all online and uh, the person to person contact actually starts when they begin working at a facility. So you, you do a lot of things, like, like so many HR parties have won. Um, do you have a favorite part of the job? Well, my favorite part of the job, believe it or not, it's also the, one of the hardest parts, but I love when it's time to uh, do payroll. We, we process payroll bi-weekly. Get out of here. Get out of so here. It's such a sense of accomplishment to get it. You're a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. Okay, go on. So, 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 so you love it. Yeah, I, I, I like that part. It's, uh, tedious and frustrating, but, um, and I probably make it worse for myself because I double and triple check everything multiple ways to the point that it's really insane. But um, it's really important to me not to have anything inaccurate on any of our employees' uh, checks. You know, I, I've come to appreciate and have some affection for uh, a lot of this, uh, uh, the blocking and tackling that, that, that keeps us going and growing. But I've never come to love payroll. Um, <laughs> someone described it to me as, as it's the kind of thing that if you get it 100% right, 100% of the time, no one notices. That's right. <laughs> right? Yes. <clears throat> but they, they always notice the mistakes, no matter how small. Oh, man, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. And I take comfort in knowing that we make a mistake every now and again. We always fix it. And, and you may mention this, but how many employees do y'all have? We have about 50, uh, including part-time. Uh, we started with six in 2017, and we've grown uh, pretty steadily. And then in the last few weeks, we've grown quite a lot due to the COVID-19 situation. Let's talk about that. So businesses are being impacted by this COVID-19 thing in different ways. Um, but it sounds like, I mean, there's, there's more demand maybe for, for, for services like yours. What we've been impacted both negatively and positively. On the positive side, uh, we're seeing a lot of demand for public health nurses as well as epidemiologists. On the negative side, we have uh, a, a handful of employees who work at a facility that has been closed. We were able to obtain a uh, payroll protection loan from the SBA. So we were able to keep uh, those uh, employees on our staff and, uh, and pay them their full salary through 
uh, the last couple of months, which coincided with when we had to spend the money for our PPP loan. Unfortunately, though, um, it's now uh, the authorities have let us know that the facility is not going to reopen until September. So with that in mind, uh, we are in the process of um, filing an unemployment claim on the behalf of our employees so they'll be able to collect unemployment until their facility reopens in the fall. Yeah, there are so many businesses um, that, that are facing similar circumstances. I'm sorry, by the way, that's hard. It is hard. It's the last thing that we want to do because uh, these are highly specialized employees that have been with this facility for a number of years and we don't want to lose them. But it's really the best the the best option for us and for the employees to uh, to do it this way so that they can collect the unemployment. Yeah, businesses are doing what, whatever they can, I think, um, until this period of uncertainty starts to settle a little bit. Um, and then once we get through this uncertainty, and I, and I think we will eventually, um, what's, what's, what's the vision? We want to continue to consistently grow, maybe not quite as fast as we have the last uh, five or six weeks, because it really uh, puts a strain on our uh, cash flow when we grow that quickly. Um, but we want to we just slow, steady growth is what we would like to see for the foreseeable future. If, if, if you had some advice to give uh, Clayton Klutz in, in 2017, knowing no, what you know now, um, what would that be? I would probably say um, do more reading and research and uh, reach out to people who have been doing this longer than me. Because when I became an HR party of one, I had zero days of experience other than just you know, knowing in general what the HR department at my big company did. And I figured it out, but I probably could have benefited from reaching out to other people. I think my first six months in that job um, were the um, most uncomfortable six months of my career. Yeah. I because if the... you mess something up, man, it, it really, it really impacts the people that you work closely with. Um, this, this is personal for a lot of people. That's right. And it's actually sort of a little scary, especially the compliance part. I think we all just have to do the best that we can and try to learn. The kinds of things you and I are talking about are the kinds of things that HR parties one deal with every day. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. I should mention, you know, both of us started um, without knowing anything in 2017. Um, we, we've actually created a resource for anyone who, who, who maybe is going to come after us um, with, with, with similar lack of experience. I just want to put a plug in for Bernie U. Um, Bernie U is an online um, uh, resource with lots of courses that, that if you and I had had access to it, um, you know, in 2017, I think would have saved us a lot of heartache. Um, it's free uh, and it, it gives people who are new to HR an opportunity to get uh, continuing education credits with some of those credentialing services um, that, 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 that keep you licensed and credentialed. Um, so check out Bernie U. Um, uh, I, I certainly wish I had access to it um, when I started. Yeah, that would have been a big help. I understand that, that on the side, in the past, you've shown dogs. Can you talk about that? Sure, that's right. Um, and uh, until a couple of years ago, I uh, participated in both AKC and uh, Cavalier Club confirmation shows. And uh, my breed is Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So I'm not showing those anymore, but because I was so uh, involved in that, I now have seven Cavaliers. The youngest name is Raina. Her name is really Raina James after the, from the TV show Nashville. Yep. And uh, she is a really sweet dog. Remind me, who's the actress that plays Raina James? Connie uh, Britton. Uh, Raina's never met Connie, has she? No, but I, I met Connie once and she asked me if I was a fan of the TV show Nashville and I revealed to her that I had a puppy named Raina James and she thought that was pretty funny. Amazing. Amazing. Um, instant credibility. You're, you are a proper fan. Yes. Um, well, thank you. I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm sure we'll do it again, even if we don't record it. Um, but good luck with, with, with this transition <sighs> out of, right? COVID-19, hopefully, um, sooner rather than later. It's not something that's gonna go away entirely. It will hopefully stabilize. And I hope your business continues to grow um, amidst all of it. Thanks, it's been really good talking to you.